Black History They Don't Want You to Know. John Ernest Matzlinger was born on September 15, 1852. He was the son of a Dutch engineer, and in 1855, Matzlinger went to live with his paternal aunt. At the age of 10, he was apprenticed in the machine shops run by his father, where Matzlinger developed an interest in machinery and mechanics. At 19, he went to sea on an East Indian merchant ship. When the ship docked in Philadelphia, Matzlinger decided to take up apprentice in the town. Shoemaking began as a cottage industry in Lynn in 1635 and developed into factory production by 1848 when the first shoe sewing machine was introduced. In the early days of shoemaking, shoes were made mainly by hand. For a proper fit, the customer's feet had to be duplicated in size and form by creating a stone or wood mold called a last from which the shoes were sized and shaped. Since the greatest difficulty at that time in shoemaking was the actual assembly of the soles to the upper shoe, it required great skill to tack and sew the two components together. It was thought that such intricate work could only be done by skilled human hands. As a result, shoe lasters held great power over the shoe industry. They would hold work stoppages without regard for their fellow workers' desires, resulting in long periods of unemployment for them. The methods of shoe production changed with the advent of the Industrial Revolution. Shoemakers used machines to attach inner and outer soles with pegs and used devices to sew upper and lowers. Cobblers cut, sewed, and tacked shoes with machines. One part of shoe manufacturing, the lasting, remained a manual operation. Many believed that it was impossible to design a machine to perform this final and important step. In 1880, Matzleger became determined to devise a machine to perform this manual operation. The lasting process involved the mechanical shaping of the shoe upper leather over the last, which is a block or form shaped like a human foot, and attaching the shoe upper to the sole. He refused to believe that it was impossible to create a machine to automate the task. Matzleger watched the hand laster than shoe factory during the day, and at night, with scraps he salvaged from the factory, he tried to duplicate movements of the lasters. Secretly, Matzleger made drawings. He experimented with a simple machine made of wire, wood, and cigar boxes, which took him six months to construct. Matlinger's employer offered $50 for the machine, even before it was perfected. Matzlinger rejected the offer. He then tried to make a lasting machine out of scrap iron, a project that took him four years. Matzlinger received an offer of $1,500 for his iron laster. Again, he refused the offer and continued to perfect his lasting machine in a vacant corner of the factory where he was employed. He spent only five or six cents a day on food in order to conserve money for his experiments, and he sacrificed sleep. Maslinger spent 10 years in the development of his lasting machine and received little encouragement. When the secret of his project became known, in fact, the public laughed at it, but Maslinger refused to be discouraged. When the time was right, Matzlager sought out investors to help finance a patent and defray the cost of demonstrating and perfecting the machine. Charles H. Delnow and Melville Nichols agreed to provide capital for Matzlager's invention in return for two-thirds ownership of the device. With sufficient financial backing, Matzlager applied for a patent. The first diagrams of the machine that Matzlager sent to the patent office in Washington, D.C were so complex that officials could not decipher them. A representative of the patent office went to Lynn to observe the machine personally in order to comprehend how it worked. On March 20th, 1883, Matzlinger received a patent on the lasting machine which could adjust the shoe, drive in the nails, and produce a finished product in one minute. After five years of work, Matzlinger obtained a patent for the invention in 1883. 
His machine could produce between 150 to 700 pairs of shoes a day, cutting shoe prices across the nation in half. John Matzlinger revolutionized the shoemaking industry with his invention of a lasting machine. This invention reduced the cost of manufacturing shoes by one half. He is remembered for his persistence and optimism in the face of prejudice and ill health. He sacrificed his health working exhausting hours on his invention and not eating over long periods of time. He caught a cold which quickly developed into tuberculosis. His early death in Lynn, Massachusetts from tuberculosis meant he never saw the full profit of his invention. He died at age 36 on August 24, 1889. Maslinger did not live long enough to see the true impact of his lasting machine on the shoe industry. The revolutionary invention enabled production of 150 to 700 pairs of shoes per day. I keep repeating that because, in contrast, hand lasters at the time could complete no more than 50 pairs in a day. The lasting machine cut the cost of shoe manufacturing by one half and thus reduce the price of shoes as well. Conditions in the shoe industry also improved for workers and wages doubled. Max Liger was recognized for his efforts only after he died. The U.S. Postal Service issued a stamp in his honor in 1991 as part of the Black Heritage Collection. A statue was also erected in his honor and a life-size portrait of Max Liger hangs on the wall of the North Congressional Church. Black history, they don't want you to know.